Hi everyone, welcome to Sig Cougar Build Part 20B. We'll be doing some things on the fuselage, uh, some glassing, some more glassing. But before we start all that, I'm going to apologize for not getting this video out sooner. And what happened is I started the season out with one plane, my giant Super Sportster. And it just wasn't enough to make it through the season as far as flying wise, because I just have this thing about having only one airplane. So I put the Cougar aside and all my other projects and I went into building mode, uh, actually finishing mode. And I decided the two planes I wanted to add to my flyable planes was my Aeromaster and uh, my giant Aeromaster. I got that finished. I did all the little Mickey Mouse stuff that had to be done. Uh, the hardest part was getting the center of gravity right but it took me a little time and uh, got the engine broken, test flew it, and uh, here's a little video of it. And got that pretty much squared away and it just took a little bit of down trim and it was good to go. Uh, the next plane I decided to, to do, I looked around in my stuff and tons of planes that were done, but I decided that I would throw together that Phoenix model P40 Warhawk that I did the unboxing video of. Um, I was going to do a video on it and show the build, but it's just a typical ARF build. Not much uh, that's very special about it. I'm going to do a review on the kit later. There's a lot of things I got I want to say about the kit itself. But I finished that, put a DLE 35 uh, rear intake, rear exhaust engine on it. I was going to go with the Quadra 35. But I decided instead of Mickey Mouse in it and rearranging and cutting and fitting the motor in, I would just go ahead and get a motor that fit. So I did. Uh, that flies very well. It's not real fast. It pulls well. It'll do big loops and things. Uh, but it's not a speedy airplane by far. But uh, it was a good showpiece. I flew it for uh, an air show down in Detroit. And... A lot of people liked seeing it fly, so that was kind of neat. To me, it's just another ARF, and it was just something to fly. <laughs> it was not, it's nothing really special in my collection, but uh, it was one of those planes to take up, take up the slack of not having anything else closer to being done. But it flies well. Um, there's the maiden flight. I'll let you look at a little bit of, of a clip here. And uh, I did that one. And as soon as I got those done, we had our air show. And I'm gonna run some pictures of this show here. And we didn't have a real big turnout as far as spectators and pilots, but we had the whole airport to ourselves because the airport was shut down for the air show. Great place to fly off the pavement. Um, next year, we're gonna have it again. It's gonna be uh, at the end of August, we'll have our show. So if you're interested in coming out to our show next year, I'll make sure everybody knows it'll be at the end of August um, on a Saturday, whichever is the last weekend in August. That's what we're going to do. But uh, the show went well. I went and I flew my Sportster and my P40 because the Aeromaster wasn't quite done at that time. So I didn't fly it, but I flew the P40 and that flew well and uh, let me see a little story three of us pilots were under the canopy on the main flight line we were talking about airplane stuff and somebody brought up crashing and uh, <laughs> I said well if you're gonna crash the best time to crash is at a show where everybody can see it you get the most spectator impact it embeds in their mind that somebody smashed a plane they're going to come back ne next year to see if anybody else bites the dust i said so if you're going to crash do it at an air show it's a it's a draw it's basically a spectacular thing that happens and uh you get a lot of ooze and that's too bads and stuff like that but that's all part of flying planes that plane just happened to hit his expiration date i said so that's 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 the time to crash well, anyways, the conversation was over. We broke up and went to pre-flight our planes. It was my turn to go up. 
So I gassed up my Sportster, my Super Sportster, taxied it out, took off, and got oh, about four foot off the ground. And all of a sudden, that little bit of crosswind hit it, dropped the left wing. I countered with a little bit of right air line, and that thing went all the way upside down. I mean, just, just like that, and stopped. Right upside down, inverted, four foot off the runway, wide open. I didn't do it. And I knew something was wrong, so I slammed the throttle shut, hopefully it would bury into the ground, but it didn't. It just stayed there wide open, no response on my controls at all. And uh, all of a sudden it wiggled again, and I had a split second of control because the engine dropped to, to idle almost immediately. I mean, this happened within two seconds, and the engine quit, the plane just nosed right down directly into the pavement almost vertically into the pavement and just exploded <laughs> it was a great crash you should have seen it i'll show you some pictures of it and when i picked up the pile the wings were like this the tail section was laid over sideways and it was straight up and down it was it was very humorous to me i'm a person when i crashed it cracks me up. I laugh. I'll learn from it, find out whatever had happened. I'll learn from whatever I did wrong, or if it was me, or if it was mechanical, or whatever. Learn from it, laugh about it, move on. And uh, anyways, I got some pictures of that. Uh, the plane taking off, and the pile. There's no video. I didn't have any video of the, the air show. But... Uh, that I'm, I'll run that right now. And matter of fact, well, it's probably already running. I'm not sure how I'm going to have this set up. So you'll see that. And after our air show was a static display over in West Branch at their airport in West Branch in Michigan here, in West Branch. Well, it was a static display. And what is a full scale fly in breakfast thing where they invite our club to, uh, put on a static display and maybe fly a demo, weather permitting or traffic permitting as far as full scales go. Uh, we've been doing this for a couple of years and it's been a lot of fun. We get a free breakfast out of it, that's even good. So uh, we did that. And then the following week was, uh, of, uh, let's see, the signal seekers down in Detroit and Westland, Michigan. They had their air show so I went and took my Aeromaster and my P-40 down there since now I'm down to two planes. And I flew the P-40 down there, but my Aeromaster refused to start. I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm having problems with the engine. Uh, but some video of that. And now that brings me up to this date. I finally have time to concentrate on the Cougar because I have to have another airplane now. I'm down to two, so I need a third one. But, uh, yeah, the last couple of days I took a, a day off and went fishing and relaxed on my boat and then decided I better start doing this before everybody starts screaming at me for not doing my videos. So here I am. And that brings you up to date. If you want to see the full videos of, uh, the maiden flight, they're, they're really short. The, 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 the air show, slideshow, the maiden flight of the P-40, the maiden flight of the Aeromaster, and the, the signal seekers air show, a little bit of that. All four of them are fairly short. And uh, I'll, I'm gonna put that on a different channel on, my, on this YouTube channel of mine. Uh, I'll put it under, uh, let's see, miscellaneous or something you'll you'll see it and uh you can watch those so let's get on with this i'm going to run the intro and as soon as that's done we'll get started on this cougar kits i think are the way to go because you don't have that cookie cut actually fiberglassing painting uh if you roll it forward just kind of press it like this card is a brick bad for a leading One last thing on tip blocks is that you want to cut outside the line. Say Cougar Build Part 8, the Formers. We are on step 29 of the manual. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I know it's going to be back. a lot of This is Part 9 of the Sig Cougar Build. This is a Sig Cobra, the 20 size version. I decided.
decided to keep going with uh, the laying of the glass on onto the fuselage since we're at that stage anyways with the wings we might as well get the fuselage out of the way and then do the flow coat on everything and then uh, do the sanding on everything so I'm going to show you a little bit of this let me mix up some of my polyester resin and then I'll get started on doing the bottom and the two stabs stabs are simple I, they'll go quick so and this up here get the chin black all done so uh, let me mix some of this stuff up and as soon as I'm ready I'll be back and we'll get this all gooped on just adding my catalyst kind of did it in drops that time just for fun mix it up real good I was kind of suspecting today to be a nice day as far as the weather outside and uh, it's April 14th right you would think spring is here and it's supposed to be getting nice but I was just looking at the weather report and it's gonna stay in the low 30s today and we're supposed to get eight inches of snow can you believe that eight inches of snow in the middle of April not good I've been wanting to get out and do some flying and uh, not gonna be able to do that either that's a real bummer all right here we go I'm gonna start up in here I'm gonna work towards the front see I'm shifting my cloth but that's okay it looks like it's staying in line but the hard part is keeping the cloth from moving I might have to use my hand to hold it in place while I draw it out towards the wing saddle And the edges, like I said, these the edges are the hardest part. Going down the center, not a problem, but these edges can be a hassle. Now I'm going around the edge of the wing fairing just a little bit because when I do the sides, I want the sides to overlap further on the bottom than on the top or on the side. So I'd rather have it a little bit lower than is in the bottom towards the bottom then towards the top before I do this the edges of the the sides of the cloth I'm gonna go right down the middle get this down the best I can and then I'll spread it out to the sides so I'm gonna basically do the stretching of the cloth towards the back and then I'll stretch it out to the sides kind of awkward to do it like this <laughs> but for the sake of filming I will suffer through it <laughs> all right here we go all the way to the edge I'm gonna start on my side you won't be able to see but I'm gonna start over here first putting a good amount on and you can probably see the seam right here in the balsa wood where I sanded down into the triangular stock. That'll be my uh, my polyester resin line. I'll use that as a, a stop line. And what I plan on doing is getting this bottom down and then I'm going to do the stabs all at the same time just to save on a little bit of time and I mixed enough <clears throat> excuse me I mixed enough resin to do that so hopefully I can get it all out of the cup before it starts to kick off and set up on me I should be able to. 
I have my ventilators running so it's fairly cold down here in the basement. Okay, that should be enough on this. A little bit more, I guess. Up in here. Okay. Now I'll come around to the side towards you. And I'll do this over here first so you can see. And then I'll cut away and do the other side. And I'm going to start just by dabbing into the fairing here. There's going to be a lot on there, but that's okay. My idea with that is to hold the cloth up into the the uh, polyester resin resin fairing that I put in there. And I'll slowly work the cloth out. I'm not going to pull the cloth too much next to the fuselage because it'll pull it down and away from uh, the polyester resin and micro balloon fairing I put in there. Come on, lift up. I'm going to take it right to the edge of the stabilizer. I'm going to keep doing this and working it to the sides until I'm far enough away that it's not going to pull on it. And again, coming out past the elevator a little bit. Or into the elevator area. Just so I can get a clean cut on it. Oh, see it's pulling. Pulling pretty good. All right. Like I said before, start with a wet brush, dab it in the middle, when, so when you pull your brush out to the edge, you don't get that gooping underneath. And on that Aralon, you've probably seen me, well, heard me when I said, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that, that I had a, a goop mark underneath. So I didn't show you how I took care of that. And all I did was I went underneath it, lifted it up, took a paper towel with acetone on it and wiped it up. That was not a big deal on that. Pretty simple to take care of. Making sure that I soak the cloth generously so not to have any dry spots. I mean, it's okay to have a dry spot because you can go back over it, but when you put on your flow coat, you want to make sure you have an even amount of uh, resin on your cloth, at least, so you don't get too many dips in your uh, flow coat. Just about got it here. I'm going to come around the edges quite a ways. You're probably wondering how I'm going to keep this cloth down because it wants to pull up. And that's a legitimate question. Usually it'll stick, but sometimes you'll find that it don't. So what I do let me come over here. I got these little $1 clamps, okay? And I just kind of put it on there and let it dangle like that. And I'll get a few more of those and take care of it. So I'm going to cut out and uh, cut out of here and put these clamps on here to draw this down and do the other side and then I'll be back. Let's get started on the top of the fuselage. 
I cut my fiberglass out and brought it up so it just lays on top of the turtle deck just a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the middle and work my way forward and back but I'm not going to start up here I'm going to start down here because it's going to want to pull so if I put my my resin up here it's going to prevent it from pulling as much so I'm just going to kind of work it and then come down to the corner right to the polyester resin flare I put in there and I can push that stuff right in there now I can start dragging it where I need it and it should stay pretty well I'm going to be constantly working to the front and the back you can see this line right here this is the canopy line when I do the turtle deck the glass is only going to come to this line and if you remember I already glassed the top here so I'm going to cut the glass off right here I'm not going to bring it all the way up to the edge of the canopy it's not necessary so I'm just going to kind of work it up here and I can see the line of where my glass ends I'm going to go I'm going to overlap of course just a little bit so I can uh, sand down the seam not a big deal easy to do there we go alright gotta keep moving here it's still wanting to pull so I'm gonna have to adjust my glass a little bit as I go trying to keep it in place it's not always easy it likes to wander on you and you can see it's puckering and giving me a hard time but it does go back starting up top and kind of working it down into the corner Okay, I'm going to cut away for a second and then I'll be back and we'll work on the side. Alright, the top edge is finished. I have enough uh, polyester resin in there. I'm going to start well, in the middle here, I guess, and just kind of work it. Not trying to pull it too much because I'll pull it off the top here. And i got to keep coming back to the top to make sure it doesn't pull away. That's important. Keep an eye on that and work the rest. This is slow going. It's a little slower than the, the wing. But once it gets stuck down a little bit better, it'll go a little quicker. Well, we did get some snow not on my patio we're only supposed to get eight inches we got 12. i went out there with the yardstick and i pushed it down on my deck through the snow and it covered up the 12 on the ruler but it was gone in a day and a half so that's not bad and today the birds are out and they're singing i don't know if you can hear it on the microphone but they're they're all happy <laughs> but everything is soaking wet and soggy now okay getting on top of this wing fairing make sure I go right on out to the edges and a little bit past so it's like I said before it makes it easier to cut and this is another place you might find you have some pullaways so I work from the, like I said this edge and I work my way down not really stretching too much on the glass just letting it lay where it may and work out the wrinkles
This stuff might set up before I get done, which is highly possible, because I'm not working very fast. And if that's the case, I'll just mix up some more and keep on going. There we go. Now I can get a little speed on it. I'm only going to work down to about here. This is where the resin line was from the bottom. You can see I dripped some right there, no big deal. That'll sand off if it sticks to the model, which I don't think it will. Now you can see how well it laid onto that fairing, just kind of went around it. Didn't try to get wrinkly or anything. Try to do that with Monocoat. You'll have a fun time with that. Now I'm getting some wrinkles here. I'll just pull those to the bottom because they're close. Come down a little bit more. Right about there. Make sure I saturate and go past edge I'm not too worried about it sticking to the motor mount or anything like that that's all gonna have to come off coming back up here because I'm seeing some dry spots tapping it down I'm gonna come down to my edge of my bottom of the fuselage where it's covered with glass which is you can see right about in here somewhere starting to try to pull away in spots tack that back down And again, I use about an ounce, and it's starting to set up in the cup, so I'm going to have to stop and mix up some new stuff. Just not going fast enough for the for the temperature down here. I might be able to get a couple more dips out of it before it sets up too much. Yeah, I think that's as far as it's going to go. All right, I'll be back. Got to mix up some more. All right, let's finish her off. Okay, I'm going to flip it up on its side a little further so I can get underneath the stab. Get this repositioned to where it's supposed to be. I'm coming right up into the flare. I put in the bottom of the stabilizer. Tacking that down. Good and, good and tight against the fairing. You're probably wondering if I'm going to be able to squeegee this off. Yes, I will. Because it will stay loose on the surface longer than will in the cup. Just about done here. Making sure I got everything down what I want. It all looks pretty good. Excuse me for standing in your way. Taking it over the edge, over the edge of the fairing a little bit. Okay, getting some pullaways on the top. I gotta manage. That looks pretty good. I got a long hair right here or something, fiberglass hair. I have to get that off in a minute. Now for the squeegeeing.
just like on the wing no difference just got to get it off of there now the hard part is coming up around the fairing because that will pull away because you when you squeegee it pulls all the slack out of it I might have to come back with a brush and push it back down but I like going laterally like this so I don't get that pull away and instead of using the squeegee on the fairing I'm just gonna wipe it with the cloth that little bit of extra weight there is not gonna hurt much And whatever I miss with the squeegee, I will get with just the bare cloth. And then I said there was a hair here, and I'm going to try to get that off. I don't know if I did or not. No, it's still there. It's not a big deal that the hair is on there. It just kind of bothers me a little bit that it's there. Okay, down here I will squeegee this way. Trying not to put too much pressure on the glass. Because it leaves a ridge on the edge when you go laterally okay double check everything we stand in your way again now I have to go towards the top and get that and try to prevent any pullaways there I'll rotate it a little bit so you can see and I'm going to pull it towards the top and kind of sideways too at the same time get the flat spots flat and the round spots vertically and the, like I said flat spots horizontally something like this and you can probably see I'm leaving some but I can get that with paper towel. I'm not trying to leave any, of course, but I'm trying to get as much off as I can. some wrinkles in there you got to work those out with the squeegee and with the wrinkles usually comes a lot of resin okay looking good All right, with another paper towel, I'm gonna to start dabbing it off and drying it. Everything looks pretty good. And where I like to dry a little bit more is right up in here. So I got a pull away happening right here. So I'm gonna grab my brush and try to work on it. Try to get that pull away down. And sometimes it doesn't wanna cooperate. So you gotta kinda give it a little extra incentive. And if it does pull away and it dries, I'm just gonna sand it off 
and leave it. And there'll be a hole there, but the resin will fill it up next time through. But everything else looks pretty good. Pretty good. See everywhere there, there's a uh, polyester resin fairing, it does get a little wetter and it'll stay looking wet, but that's okay. So what I'm trying to do is pull a little bit of fiberglass up in there to give it a little slack so it lays down. It's not seem to be working very well. But it, apparently I'm going to have a pull away right up in here that I cannot manage. I'm going to try to, but I don't think I'll be able to get it to work. Because it's, it's not, uh, I'm getting fiberglass hairs. Sometimes you just got to leave well enough alone and hope for the best. I don't know if I got any good resin left. Yeah, I'm going to put a little more resin on here to get it to try to get it to stick. Good enough. I'm going to leave it at that. I got one little bit of wet spots up front here. I can see you probably see it too. And the little hairs that are laying all over the place, I'm not worried about those. When I run the scotch Brite pad on there, it should take those off. There's a side. I'm going to take a break and let this dry off, and I'll come back, and, we'll, and I'll probably do the other side. Um, and something else I wanted to show you is uh, doing a hard surface that's already pinned like the elevator and the rudder. So I'll, I'll probably do the rudder because you can see that better. And uh, some guys say to cover these by themselves. And some guys say, well, I cover the whole thing and with glass and then I trim it out. I've done it both ways and it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And uh, we'll go from there. Be back in a bit. You can see I have my glass cloth laid out. It's not stuck on there very well. <laughs> I haven't put the static to it yet. But I wanted to talk about covering rudders and fins. Uh, you can lay a piece of glass all the way over. And what I do is I'll cock the surface all the way to one side, away from the side that you're covering, and just lay it all on there. And once you get it laid out and the glass or the polyester resin on the glass you push it into the gap the fiberglass into the gap and then you bring your rudder to neutral or in this case the rudder and what it does is it overlaps to the inside just a little bit on both the vertical stab and your moving surface could be your horizontal stabilizer could be your wing Regard doesn't matter. Regardless of the surface that you do, when it's laid out over the top, you just push it in. And I did it this way because the length of my, or the width of my uh, fiberglass will only cover the turtle deck and the vertical stab. So that's why I'm not doing the whole thing. And once it's dry, you just take your knife and zip it right up the long side of the, the, the permanent surface like uh, the horizontal stabilizer or the vertical stabilizer. And then you sand the inside of this groove with a piece of sandpaper and knock all the fuzzies off of it. And you don't really need to worry about the very inside because you get that with paint. And once that's covered with paint, there's no fuel gonna get in there because you'll be painting over top of your hinges and stuff. And you don't have to worry about the hinges in the earlier videos, uh, you remember I used uh, petroleum jelly, wiped it on there, heated it up with a, with a match. You can use a uh, heat gun or whatever. 
and get the Vaseline or petroleum jelly to flow into the hinge and it won't stick. But since I'm doing just the turtle deck and the vertical stabilizer, I'm not going to be doing the rudder. The rudder I'll do separately and I'll show you that. But I just wanted to tell you about how to do it this way. Um, let's see. I think, in my opinion, the best way to do it with fiberglass uh, is once you put, uh, don't put your your surface on the plane like I did. I did this because of the build and to show that uh, how to put the hinges in, not necessarily thinking ahead on what I was going to do because most people use monocoat and hinging and things just come naturally, uh, especially if you pin hinge like I do. So what I do, uh, let me explain a little deeper, is I'll pin the hinge to either the surface or the stabilizer or the wing or whatever and then I will cover that surface and then I will cover the moving surface separately and since there's no flow coat on there you can still put your uh, your toothpicks in if you're using a pinned hinge and still get a nice cover over top of it because you're putting a flow coat over it and it'll absorb into the toothpick a little bit when you sand it flush you'll never even know it's there Let me get on to uh, glassing this section. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the plastic on the turtle deck. You don't need to worry about heat buildup if you do it the way that I do. Putting on the flow coat, scraping it off, it keeps a very low uh, temperature as far as the cure, curing goes, and it won't warp your turtle deck. I've done this on several models, several Cougars, never had a problem and once I get up to the stab coming up I have to make sure that this fillet right here stays in place I'll need to make a cut maybe two to go around this curve right here this compound curve and then I'll lay over top of the turtle deck and I'm just gonna go a little over halfway on the turtle deck and uh, stop there and then I'll I'll sand off the excess and lay the other side up I guess I'm at the point where I need to mix up my polyester resin and uh, when I get that done I'll be back and I'll start laying this on. All mixed up and ready to go here. What I'm going to do is just start down the middle on the edge, kind of stick down the edge first. I'll go all the way to the front and all the way to the back. Kind of pulling it as I go. Not too much, not too awfully hard. Because it will mess up your alignment if you do too hard. I'm going right down. You can see I laid the polyester resin and micro balloon filler in that edge and I'm only going to go up to this black line where the canopy goes. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I want the canopy to stick tight to the plastic so I can glue the two pieces of plastic together. You can see it is doing a little pulling, which is okay, which is good actually. And I put tape on my surfaces, one underneath the, the rudder and another piece of tape along the edge of the rudder, just in case I get a little bit of polyester resin in there. Okay, I'm just going to kind of drag a little bit up and to the front. I'll do this first, trying to stay out of the way, unlike what I did in the, the other section there where I was standing in the way of pretty much everything. Camera angle was bad. But I'll pull it to the front. 
like so. Doesn't have to be perfect to that line, but I'm going to uh, take it to the edge as close as I can. If it's a little over, that's okay. I can sand it. All right, I'm gonna come back this way. Head towards the rear of the model. Because the next hardest part is right here. So now I have to worry about two places that it may pull away. And I've never had good luck with it not pulling away at least a little bit. It just likes to do that for some reason or another. All right. Now I have to go for my scissors, which I left, I thought I left close by. Here we go on the far side of the table. And I'm going to put a snip right here another one right in there probably don't need two but i'm going for two okay get myself in gear and i'm going to do this little fairing and i'll bring it up over top of the rudder a little bit the vertical stab And I'm pull it towards the back. And sometimes you just saw that I picked it up with my brush a little bit. It happens. Don't worry about it. The idea is to make sure that it's covered with polyester resin. Work your wrinkles out, go past the edge. With the masking tape there, I can go past the edge over the masking tape and not worry about it sticking. Because polyester resin will not stick to the masking tape. Okay, go around the vertical stabilizer, checking for dry spots as I go, which I have quite a few. last dry spot here bring the rest of it around and it's going to leave a glob on the edge it's not a big deal all right very good now I'm going to bring the rest of it over the top I cannot exactly tell how far I'm dragging over the top I'm guessing because of this angle. This is the only angle I can do this that you can see without me being in the way. <laughs> and if I don't make it quite over the top, it's okay too. Okay, now I need to drag it towards the front because it's starting to bunch up. I have some dry spots I need to get rid of. And it looks like my, my resin is starting to kick off. See it? Little globs. That means I'm at the end of my rope here. So I'm going to have to stop doing this and get out my squeegee. 
Got my squeegee. I'm gonna start taking off some excess. some bit out it's not a good thing it's so one thing you have to worry about is dragging your cloth up and that does happen once in a while And this is where you have to worry about your pullaways is when you're doing your squeegeeing down here at the very bottom. Got a little bit of a a fold in my fiberglass here. Work that out. Okay, not bad. You're not going to get all of it around the edge because it just doesn't seem to cooperate when you're getting into this edge right down here. So what I do is I'll pull it and then I'll wipe it out with a cloth. I'm going to tip it on its side and put my clamps on there to hold down the fiberglass in a moment when I get done squeegeeing it off. But I wanted you to see the process a little better than what I showed it on the other section there on the fuselage. But the fuselage is the same as the wings. It's not a big deal. Pretty simple. Just about there. So I can see some heaviness on here that I really need to get off. I think I need to make one more cut here and I'll do it like this. And that should lay down the way I want it, just like that. Maybe another cut. There we go. And I'll do one more here just for grins. Now I should be able to get that to lay down. See it's starting to pull away. The more I pull, the more it pulls. You just take your, your squeegee and push it down in there and it goes back. Okay, squeegeeing is done. Now I said I'm gonna wipe this edge out with the cloth, which I'm gonna do right now. Try it out the best I can without pulling up the weave. If you leave a little there, it doesn't matter because you need to sand it anyways. So just kind of let it go. I 
And I like getting the edges. You don't want to get a lot of excess on the edge because it'll make a mess. There it is. As good as I'm going to get it. All wiped off as dry as I can. See, it looks extra wet on this uh, area here. That doesn't look like it's quite down. There it goes. It's another good tool to have when you're squeegeeing something off. Because that helps. Gets a little more out of there. All right. That's as far as I'm going to go. I'm going to flip it on its side and put the clothespins to it here and put a little pressure on it. Be back in a few. Now you're going to see why the masking tape comes in handy. I got a lot of globs here that I knew I put on there but didn't really care. And I have a fresh blade on my scalpel. And what I'm going to do is just cut right along the edge of the vertical stab. And cut right through the, uh, the fiberglass and just drag it. It cuts real easy. Over the hinges it might have a little bit of a problem but double back on it. Just take it all the way down. I'm going to be in the way for a second. Cut the excess off. And that should just pull right up. Just like that. Kind of pulled up a little bit. This edge is going to be cleaned up with pieces of sandpaper so it doesn't matter too much too awful much and I'll take this uh, masking tape off if I can and that leaves nothing on my rudder and I'll do the same thing when I when I do the rudder I'm just gonna lay this on here like that another piece and glass over top of the rudder I'll show a little bit of that, but it's, it's basically the same thing as doing the vertical stab. Rudders aren't a problem. And that's what this tape is for, because I'm going to run the brush. Tip this a little bit so you can see. I'm going to run the brush right down here, underneath, and seal off this elevator, or this, this rudder on the bottom. When I do that, it'll be over top of the masking tape. And when I'm done with that, and and glassing the sides of the rudder, I'll pull the tape off and there won't be any extra goop on my on my horizontal stabilizer. Now you can see I got my fiberglass all trimmed off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay some uh, polyester resin underneath the rudder. I'm going to push it under with the brush, get it up there as far as I can. And the tape's going to protect my stabilizer. But I'm going to put a good amount in there and just keep shoving it up in there, packing it in there, and I'll flip it to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing, load up my brush, and stuff it right up in there so it's absolutely packed. Grab a glass cloth here. I have to turn this just a bit. Get this straightened up on there. It's a piece of scrap from uh, earlier, so I left it in one long piece in case you're wondering. Get it adjusted and pretty close to where I want it. And just put it on just like I would on any of the other surfaces. Start at the bottom, work my way out to the front, and keep it as straight as you can. <laughs> And a little problem here. And just work it. This is no different than, like I said, any of the other surfaces. You just have to uh, lay on your resin and work it up. I'm going to go up the rudder, straight up to the top there. Just like that. up and over the top a little bit. And since it's a small piece, I'm just gonna work it out to the sides once I go up to the middle. 
and work it to the front and then I'll work it to the back as soon as I get this laid down. You can see it's pulling a little bit, but it'll pull back when I do the opposite side. And as you can see, my tape is protecting my vertical stabilizer. Now I'm going to kind of work it. Got some hairs all over the place here. I keep on getting stuck to the brush. <laughs> it's hard to, sometimes it's just hard to get away from. You can just work through it. It's not a big deal. Even if they get caught up in the, onto the surface, it, it, it all comes off. Have to work my wrinkles out and get all the get all the dry spots wet. Yeah, those things are a problem. And I got three little ripples there, kind of point them out there. You can't see them too well, but they're there. Three little dents on the very back of my rudder, right where I just put the brush. And uh, I'm going to lay it on its side and I'm going to put some clamps on it and pull it tight and uh, squeegee it off and you've seen that part so I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of skip that part. And what I like doing is rolling the rudder to one side and I'll bring it back and it folds the little bit of cloth underneath the rudder. Well, kind of overdid it there, but I just lay it down with the brush, get it nice. And just before it dries, I'll pull the tape out and trim it all at the same time and get rid of all the excess underneath. Pretty simple. And I'm going to shove the glass cloth in with the back of my scalpel into the crack a little bit, right into the gap. That way there's a little bit of an overlap when I trim it off. Just like that. And once I get the clamps on there and pull it down, I'll come back when it dries and take the tape off. That's about all I can show you. I'll be back when it dries. Okay, I'm back. It's been a little while. Everything is dry. <laughs> when I say a little while, I'm talking a couple of months. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but went into the flying season with one plane had air shows to fly and static displays to put on i didn't have anything to to fly or or anything like that so i had to take some time off and knock out a few airplanes and get them going and now i'm back so we can finish off this cougar i want to fly this this year um so the tail surface is dry. I left a little bit dangling here. I need to remove a little bit. I'm just going to use some 220 and uh, just take this excess off. I'm at a bad angle here. There we go. I know you can't see, so I'm going to try to change this. I'm, I've got to apologize for that beginning segment where I'm standing in the way. I didn't realize the camera angle was so bad, but uh, I'm learning as I go. <laughs> what can I say? I'm not a professional. I wish I had a cameraman that could tell me these things as I go, but I don't. All right, there it is. It's trimmed off. See, there's a nice gap all the way down. Let's see if I can get this in there. I can't see what I'm doing, so. And if you have a little bit of uh, polyester resin that seeps into the, I'm running out my cord here, that seeps into the, the space in between your rudder or whichever moving surfaces, just stick a piece of sandpaper in there and just work at it. And you can pretty much work any overlapping polyester resin there is. But you can see that it's trimmed off real nice. It's very flat. And uh, what I need to do is finish this other side. You see me do this side. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about covering your surfaces. 
Uh, the best way to do it, the absolute best way that I think, in my opinion, works the best, is to keep your surfaces off the model. Uh, you can hinge either the, the tail surface or whatever surface it might be, wing, horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer, whichever, and go ahead and pin those hinges on, on those surfaces. And as long as you do the Vaseline or petroleum jelly trick in the hinge, you don't have nothing to worry about as far as goop getting in there and setting them up. But it makes it a lot easier to cover with your fiberglass. So you do, let's say, like I did here, with the rudder off. And you can actually overlap and trim around the hinges like you would monocoat. And put your little clamps on there, weight it down, and everything's good. And as far as the surface goes, don't worry about drilling holes for pins or anything like that. Just go ahead and cover it and get your first uh, layer of glass on there and your coat of polyester resin and do the whole thing, both sides. And once that's done, oh, make sure it's already pre-slotted. You want that to be pre-slotted, makes it easier. Um, then you slide it on and then drill your holes for your, your toothpicks to pin it. And then sand them flush when you're done. Once you do that, it'll be real easy when you put the flow coat on, which is the next step, to uh, cover up those uh, little bit of roughness from the, your pin, your toothpick, or whatever you put in there. And you, you'll never know they're there. Nobody else will know they're there. Uh, it'll be nice and smooth so that to me is the best way cover them separately and just decide on which one you want to pin you want to put the hinges on the rudder first or elevator whatever you put it on your put your hinges on your moving surface first that's fine or you can put them on your stationary surface either way works um, but leave one side off and just cover it and then slide it together and and pin it and then you're good to go all right i guess i need to uh finish this other side of the turtle deck and vertical stab and rudder uh, i don't think i need to show that again and uh let's see anything else i can tell you about this before i go um hopefully that answers a lot of your questions and you might wonder about the the, uh, the seam like right here and right here where I laid the, the glass down I don't worry about that I might knock it down a little bit with some 220 or 80 grit or something just to knock down the bumps but when I put the flow coat over it it's going to smooth a lot of that out and all the little indentations that you might have or imperfections are going to get filled then you come back with your 80 grit and you smooth that out and it takes care of all that so don't worry about your seams too much uh, get your overlap good and sand it kind of flush yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect but only on the overlap that's the only place you want to do that so uh, let me get at this I'm gonna cut the video off right here we're pushing an hour and uh, I'll get this done when I come back we're gonna do the flow coat over the whole model. So until then, have a good one.